talking once again to Wolf Hoffman from Accept. Wolf, thanks for taking my call. You're very welcome. Nice to be with you. It's it's good to talk to you once again. Right, I've got a confession to make, which leads to a question. Mm-hmm. I've been an Accept fan for 40 years. Oh, shit. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely gutted when I found out that Peter had left. Yeah, same here, my friend. What can you tell me about that? Well, how do you think I felt after all these years? Same thing here. I was like a little bit heartbroken, and I felt it was not only a sad day for Accept, it was also a sad day for rock and roll or heavy metal in general, because, you know, I thought we're going to be doing this, I know, until the sun goes down, I don't know, for, until forever. But he he all of a sudden decided otherwise, and there was no way he made that decision, and that was it. And that's sad, but what can you do, man? I decided, as long with everybody else, that the show must go on, and we continue without him. So this is what we did, and here's the new album without Peter. But it's still sad. I still miss him sometimes. It's just the way it is. Three guitarists now. Now, if ever there's a band I thought wouldn't mm-hmm. have needed another guitarist, it's except. Tell us about the decision to have all these guitars and what have they brought to the band? Yeah, it's not that we felt we needed somebody else. It was more or less we met this guy, Philip Schaus, uh, doing a tour which we did two years ago all throughout Europe. It was called Symphonic Terror where we played with orchestras and it was a very special different type of show we did there and um anyhow phil was on that tour and we found out what a brilliant guitar player is he is what a nice guy he is how easy he is to work with so we really bonded w- with one another and we felt like why shouldn't he be or why couldn't he be a third guitar player and accept because there's no really any law that says you can't have that and you know what it enables us to do is just open up the whole thing a little bit more we can now play different parts musically here and there we can throw back and forth the 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 solo stuff on stage more we can do i I don't know we can do a few more things that we normally can't do with just two guitar players but it's more or less a question of why not and not a question of why do we have him or why do we need him no we don't need him but we wanted him you know good answer Right. Tell us about this new album and how the lockdown stuff affected uh, Accept. Tell us what impact it had and how you worked around it. Yeah. uh, When it came time to start the new album, I mean, let's say we are in 2019. I've been writing for months and months a bunch of demos and song ideas like I always do. And we knew we wanted to record it in 2020. And I, I... called Andy and I said, you know, how's this going to look all throughout the year? When can we do this? And he said, well, I'm going to be on tour all throughout the summer and Accept was going to be booked all throughout the summer for festival shows. So it would have been quite difficult to really make proper plans. Um, but we decided let's just go ahead and start recording while we, and let's, let's record what we have and worry about the rest later. You know, so that's what we did. We started recording the first batch of six or seven songs in March and then wanted to regroup some point later. And that's exactly during that time while we were recording this first batch of songs is when the news got worse every day about the rising corona death and and, uh, lockdowns and all that stuff started to really get serious. So we all went back home and found out that touring was canceled. Uh, for everybody, for except for Judas Priest and pretty much worldwide, everybody, nobody could go tour anymore, as we know. So all the summer shows were canceled, which is was terrible, of course. But the good side was at least we had time to work on this album now. Um, the only bad part was nobody could travel into the United States anymore from Europe. So Andy couldn't come. To, the band was recording in Nashville, like always, Nashville, Tennessee, and the United States. So we found a solution around all that by recording ourselves, basically, and having Andy be online, virtual, 
virtual uh, the virtual producer basically he was only visible on a computer screen <laughs> so we made it happen man but it was strange luckily this was only for the remainder of the five songs or so we recorded back then and it was fairly easy to do because we know andy so well and we've done it together so many times the proper way that we you know we felt it was doable but you know we kind of limped home in a way you know Right, tell us a bit about the uh, the album, some songs on there. I would have to say my favourite is No One's Master. Tell us about that one. Good, good choice. That is actually, yeah, interestingly enough, that is a song that Martin Motnick, the new bass player, wrote for the most part. Oh, well, give him a pat on the back from me. Yeah, I will, actually. He'll be glad to hear that because he surprised me and everybody a lot by just coming out of nowhere with a bunch of the except songs or songs that he had written because I invited everybody and I said let's see what you got if you want to participating in the songwriting process be my guest because I didn't feel like I wanted to write everything myself so he came up with a bunch of cool stuff and that's one of them so and it what surprised me about them and Andy and everybody is that they sounded so much like you know an except material that we could have written it really sounds like one of my ideas and that's like of course perfect you know it's right on target and there's another one he he, he written another one that's uh sucks to be you that's mostly his idea he's slotting in nicely isn't he yeah he did certainly did and a bunch of other cool stuff along the way and, and parts of the other songs and even some lyrical ideas so he was the big surprise on this album so even though it was sad that peter was gone yeah it's, it's, oh, it's going to be sad forever, but at least Martin came up and tried to, re, you know, fill his spot the best he could. And my God, he, he's really doing well. When I hear Overnight Sensation, all I can think of is Instagram models. Yeah, that's true. Is that who we're poking a stick at here? It's really taking the fun out of uh, 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 poking fun at like the YouTube kids and the TikTok people and, and all that. You know, the new generation of kids that grew up on the internet basically who become literally famous overnight sometimes you know they post a cool video on there and all of a sudden they have a you know million views or 10 million views and they're like an overnight sensation not always for the right reasons though no and sometimes you wonder for what reason at all which is so different from the way that we grew up you know if you think about it we all learned our instruments and we knew what lay ahead was years and years of practice and that was sort of the norm you know if you want to be really good and famous and well known for something then you got to put in the years uh and nowadays it's just a matter of days or hours and, and somebody is famous it's crazy isn't it tell me about symphony of pain who came up with that one was that you or was that um good old martin as well no that was me um yeah symphony of pain all right um I've been working on that song title for a while, for many years, actually. You know, we always have a list of songs uh, or topics or song titles, almost like a little cheat sheet that we that helps sometimes for inspiration. So whenever you have a good idea, vocally, lyrically, whatever, you sometimes write it down. And this was on my list for a long time, and I've worked on it even during the Blind Rage album. It never amounted to anything that I liked. But finally, I had some riffs that really seemed to fit the phrase really well and seemed to have the vibe for it. So I thought Symphony of Pain, you know, the word symphony alone sort of indicates this could definitely be a song where some classical elements would be, some phonic, symphonic elements would be in order. So then I thought, you know, the most well, or the best known symphonies of all time are probably Beethoven's Fifth and Ninth. And luckily, I found a place on these in in that song for those real classical elements in there. And then we took it one step further and thought, you know, lyrically, we could even talk about Mr. Beethoven himself. And so that that song really turned into a full blown Beethoven song, you know, because Symphony of Pain is talking about his personal struggle with deafness. Because, you know, if you think about it, that's quite a symphony of pain. Absolutely. To be a co- and uh, turned deaf. I mean, couldn't even imagine. It's horrible. Samson and Delilah, excellent instrumental at the end. Tell us about that one. Well, there's your other instrumental, uh, your other classical inspired song. Uh, and this is a good example of something that could have 
ended up on my solo album. And like I said earlier, I usually just write everything that comes to mind. And uh, that was in all my many tracks that I recorded. You know, sometimes I just record a little melody that I like. And sometimes I work on classical melodies and see how they sound like on guitar and what kind of riffs I could come up with. So this was basically sort of an uh, experiment. I played it to Andy and he really liked it. And he was the one who suggested we should put it on the album in one form or another. And it's based on two classical elements. One is called Samson and Delilah, appropriately, by a French composer, Saint-Saëns. And the other one is the Symphony from the New World by Antonin Dvorak. So two pieces inspired me there. And I, I actually managed to put them in one piece, even though they were originally never meant to be together at all. You know, it's two completely unrelated uh, composers, compositions whatsoever. But, you know, it felt like, a good old heavy metal piece when it was all done and not it doesn't sound classical at all actually if you don't know these original versions then you'd probably never even think about classical music i'd really like it it's a good way to finish off the album too yeah it feels like a little nice little walk-in off music doesn't it like after a live show or after a movie the you know the credits roll down you've heard it all you've seen it all and then there's your outro <laughs> yes, it does. Um, almost like uh, the galley on uh, an earlier album. Yeah, exactly. We've done that's right. We've done it before. Um, you know, we don't. You know, with these things, whether it's the classical stuff or an, an instrumental, we try to not have a formula and say we need one on the album or we need to have a instrumental piece or we need to have a classical piece. I think it it kind of dictates itself when it's there and it falls in place and it feels right. We do it. But other than that, we're not trying to, you know, push it. Right. Now, we've had to, I say we, obviously, you have had to uh, delay the album. Any particular reason behind that? Yeah, it has something to do with the distribution and manufacturing. It's really not our fault. We have nothing to do with it. Uh, this album's been in the can for months and months. And finally, at the last minute before release, something went went wrong and I've heard some shipments got delayed through because of the Brexit thing in Europe but honestly I don't really know all the details all I know is it's going to be another two weeks and at this point hell we've waited so long what's another two weeks eh exactly right then what happens I mean what prospect have we got for touring over there are any areas opening up has anything been booked what's the go well Booking went on, uh, went on all along. It's just been postponed and postponed. I mean, originally we would be on headline uh, on a big headline tour all throughout Europe right now uh, to coincide with the release, but that had to be pushed back a year to early twenty two to be safe. And we had summer festivals from last year that have been rescheduled for this summer, and they are now to be discussed. I mean, I hope they will happen, but. Nobody quite knows. I mean, we can't really look into the future, mm. and it doesn't look too good. If you want my personal feeling, uh, it's sort of 50-50 if that can happen or not. But I definitely do hope that can, because, hell, I, wanna, I can't wait to get out there again. So the album is called Too Mean to Die, coming out very soon. Any last thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's coming out on the 29th, and even though we can't be on tour right now, we want the fans to listen to the new material and really enjoy the album maybe it's going to take their mind off a little bit of the current corona crazy weirdness whatever you know hopefully people can still enjoy the album and bang their heads in quarantine if you want or do whatever you know and then and hopefully soon we can all meet again in person on the road have some proper live shows it really has sucked and i imagine you guys will be going stir crazy as well Oh, absolutely. And it's not only financially a disaster, it's really also mentally it, it, it wears you out because, I mean, it's it's why we are musicians, you know. If you're a musician, it's, it's, it's okay to rehearse and it's okay to record albums and to sit at home and play, but really you want to play out. You want to play with your friends and you want to go out on the road. You want to perform that stuff. You want to get the audience reaction. That is, that's the magic. That's where, you know, the other stuff is just, you know, getting ready and like 
preparing yourself for it. So it's all, you know, the final goal, goal of a musician is always to tour and to be out there. And if we can't do that, you know, it's like, what the hell? Why am I, why am I here? Why do I exist? <laughs> hey, Wolf, uh, I'll wrap it up. Eh? <laughs> all right, my friend. It's been nice talking with you. You stay safe and we'll chat again or maybe see each other in person before too long, okay? Thanks for uh, talking to me today. Good luck with the new album, Too Mean to Die. Excellent. I love it. Best of luck with it. And, yeah, hopefully we see you out on the road soon. Thank you, my friend.